Good morning, New Ma Zion family and visitors. Welcome to another virtual Sunday School class from the Cross Comprehensive Review of Sacred Scripture. Let us pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Heavenly Father, we come before your holy presence with our hearts filled with thanksgiving. Lord God, we thank you, Father, for your goodness. We thank you for your grace. And we thank you for your mercy towards us. Lord God, we thank you for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord God, as we come before your holy presence, we ask that you will prepare our hearts to receive your word with understanding as we are led by the Holy Spirit. We ask, Lord God, that you will help us that we may be doers of your holy word and not hearers only. Lord God, we ask that you will forgive our sins and bless this class as we lift the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Bless us, Lord, so that we may be a blessing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The date is June the 16th in the year 2024. To our visitors, our senior pastor, Reverend Larry L. Roundtree II, welcomes you to the New Mount Zion Church family, where we are with God's grace, changing the world through the love of Christ, one soul at a time. This quarter's theme is, We are the body of Christ. God loves us, and he wants us to serve one another in love. I beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all. Ephesians, the fourth chapter, verses 1 through 6 a. I am Deacon Keith Poe, and I will be serving as the facilitator for today's lesson. And he, Christ, is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. Colossians, the first chapter, verses 18 through 19. Today's lesson scripture, Romans, the 15th chapter, verses 1 through 13. Our lesson focus, glorify God by accepting and building up one another. As we observe Father's Day today, some of us come to that celebration with mixed emotions or wounds in need of tender care. Satan has waged war for centuries against the hearts and minds of our young men, stealing them away from the family structure of our heritage. But our Eternal Father holds up a heavenly vision of His desire for a paradigm shift in relationships. In the context of the body of Christ, there is to be a unity that promotes healing and practical functional love that mentors by example. Christ, the head of the body, brings reconciliation and healing because it pleased our Heavenly Father to have all His fullness dwell in Him. Praise God for His Father's Day gift to each of us. We are in Unit 1, 
with the third of five lessons, Experiencing Hope, with Lesson 3, Empowered Servants. Building Up You are doing just fine. Keep on pushing. You can make it. These are the expressions of Christian brothers and sisters who constantly build up one another. Paul told the Roman church to refrain from paying attention only to personal interest. Looking out for others and being unselfish puts God's work on display. People will stop and marvel when observing improved behaviors because we usually ask, What about me? What's in it for me? But when Jesus changes the heart, he gives the ability to go beyond a me first attitude. When Christians practice ministering to others before themselves, it places the Father in a good light. The praise and honor go to him and everyone benefits. Too often today, we find it easier to tear each other down. Criticizing each other on social media has become an ugly practice. This is a classic strategy of Satan who attacks churches. He must be resisted. Examples Paul stands out as a representative of unselfish love. He offered a prayer for the church in Rome and tried to close the division between Jews and Gentiles. He asked them to bear with one another's faults and shortcomings, to give and receive without arrogance. God's plan has always been to include, not exclude, the Gentiles, Acts the 13th chapter verses 46 through 48. Unselfish. The United States tends to be an I focused nation. But the children of God are called by the Father to respond in a different manner. Scripture teaches that if you consider yourself a person of fortitude and strength, then you must consider your weaker brother or sister as well. 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, verses 21 through 26. Let's support one another. These kinds of actions lift the name of the Father higher. Section 1 is our life need and is intended for small group discussion. Identify ways we can lift up our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. After you have read the narrative, Empowered Servants, from your student book, notice question one. Who is someone in the church body whom you admire and why? For question one, you will reflect on who you admire in the church and why. Some may name pastoral staff for their leadership abilities. Others may name members of the prayer group for being intercessors on the congregation's behalf. Still others may name leaders of the hospitality ministry for providing a spirit of welcoming and connection. The list of possibilities is quite endless. Question 2. What sometimes holds you back from fully accepting others? Question 2 asks you to consider why you might struggle to accept others, whether in the church or in their private lives. Some might have issues of trust because of past wounds or instances of betrayal. Others may believe that they have nothing in common with the newcomers and are unsure how to bridge the gap. And question three, how is God glorified 
when we live in community and harmony. Question 3 invites us to ponder how God is glorified when we are living in harmonious community. God designed us to be relational and interconnected. When we are living according to his grand design, he is glorified. Section 2 is our Bible learning. Read how Paul implores readers to follow Christ's example in how to treat our neighbors. Be considerate of one another. Our lesson scripture begins with Romans the 15th chapter verses 1 through 6 from the King James Version. We then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves that every one of us please his neighbor for his good to edification. For even Christ pleased not himself, as it is written, the reproaches of them that reproach thee fell on me. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. Now the God of patience and consolation grant you to be like-minded one toward another according to Christ Jesus. Verse 6 That ye may with one mind and one mouth glorify God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Paul told readers to lift up their fellow believers, especially for the stronger to carry the weak. Paul said the scriptures were given to us to provide hope. Paul reminded us that when we build one another up, we bring glory to God. Question 4. What is the goal of putting our neighbors, from verse 2, first? Paul stated that the intent was to build up or edify our fellow believers. If we put them last and our own priorities first, we run the risk of tearing them down in their faith and undermining the body of Christ. Question 5. Who is the prime example of being focused on the needs of others and why? Paul drew his reader's attention to the Lord Jesus. The apostle noted that the Son did not live to please himself. Instead, for the sake of the lost and in fulfillment of Psalm 69 and 9, Jesus bore the insults others hurled at him. And question six. How can believers be considerate of one another? The ability for believers to be patient and kind with one another did not arise within themselves. Their source of endurance and encouragement came from the Creator. He alone would enable them to live in harmony with one another as Christ will now share three Bible extras. Loving our neighbors. In Romans the 15th chapter verse 2, Paul admonished his readers to please their neighbors for their good. Toward the end of Jesus' public ministry, an expert in the law of Moses asked him which of the commandments was greatest. In response, he named two. Matthew, the 22nd chapter, verses 34 through 40, and Mark, the 12th chapter, verses 28 through 31. The first was the importance of loving God with every aspect of one's being. Deuteronomy, the 6th chapter, verse 5. The second, equally vital commandment, 
was for believers to love their neighbors as themselves. Leviticus, the 19th chapter, verse 18. The idea is that we need to work out our love for God in daily life. Also, a supreme love for God will always find expression in unselfish love for others. What was written in the past Repeatedly, in this text, Paul refers to the Old Testament as the Scriptures, even though they were written in the past, and perhaps were not even familiar to Gentiles in his audience. Paul says that these Scriptures were written to teach us, verse 4. They are not outdated or irrelevant by any means. In verses 9 through 12, Paul quotes from Deuteronomy, Isaiah, and the Psalms. Traditionally, the Hebrew Bible or Old Testament is divided into three parts. Torah, which means law, the prophets, and the writings, including everything else. By quoting from all three parts, of the Old Testament, Paul showed that all of Scripture testifies to the plan of God. And follow the example of Christ. Paul encouraged his readers to follow the example of Christ by adopting a humble attitude toward one another. Romans, the 15th chapter, verse 5. In the Apostle's epistle to the Philippians, he pointed to Jesus as the premier illustration of humility. Philippians, the 2nd chapter, verses 5 through 11. As Paul's hymn declares, the Son existed as God along with the Father and the Spirit from eternity past even to the point of enjoying the glories of heaven. Yet the Son, Jesus, willingly gave up his high position to become a servant of the very ones he created. In short, Jesus unselfishly put our need for salvation ahead of holding on to what was rightly his. In fact, Jesus demonstrated humility to the point of death, as seen in his atoning sacrifice on the cross. As a result, the Father highly exalted the Son. At his second advent, all people will submit to him and confess that he is Lord. Philippians, the second chapter, verses 9 through 11. Accept one another. Romans, the 15th chapter, verses 7 through 13. Wherefore, receive ye one another, as Christ also received us to the glory of God. Now I say that Jesus Christ was a minister of the circumcision for the truth of God, to confirm the promises made unto the fathers and that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy. As it was written, For this cause I will confess to thee among the Gentiles, and sing unto thy name. And again he saith, Rejoice, ye Gentiles, with his people. And again, Praise the Lord, all ye Gentiles, and laud him, all ye people. And again, Isaiah saith, there shall be a root of Jesse, and he that shall rise to reign over the Gentiles, in him shall the Gentiles trust. Verse 13. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. Paul said that Christians are to act in a way to bring praise to God. 
Paul implored readers to accept one another, just as Christ accepted them. Paul showed that scripture points to God's plan to save Jews and Gentiles. Paul prayed for readers to be filled with joy and peace. Question 7. What two reasons did Paul give for believers accepting one another? Paul first noted that the Messiah unconditionally received repentant, believing sinners. Second, the apostle stated that when Christians welcomed their peers without reservation, they glorified the Lord. Question 8. How is the advancement of the gospel affected by believers accepting one another? Paul quoted from various Old Testament passages to indicate that Christians receiving each other would convince Gentiles of God's mercy. The apostle had in mind unsaved non-Jews all of whom would come to faith in Christ because of seeing how God's people lovingly treated one another. And question 9. What sorts of feelings would emerge when believers accept one another? Three feelings are worth mentioning. First, Paul stated that God's children would experience renewed hope. Second, as a result of trusting in Christ, they will be filled with joy. Lastly, they would overflow with peace, especially through the Spirit's abiding presence and power in their lives. Showing Hospitality to One Another the Greek verb rendered receive from Romans the 15th chapter verse 7 from the King James Version means to accept or welcome. Believers do this by showing hospitality. In this regard, Hebrews the 13th chapter verse 2 urges them to show hospitality to strangers, which most likely refers to itinerant Christian preachers. In the first century, there weren't many inns, and those that did exist often had an unsavory reputation. So travelers had to rely on householders if they were to get good accommodations during a journey. As an encouragement toward being hospitable, the writer reminded his readers that some had unwittingly hosted angels. Even today, Welcoming and entertaining in our homes can be a way of ministering to others. The Children of the Promise Romans the 15th chapter verse 8 is not the first place in this letter where Paul spotlighted God's promises to the patriarchs. For example, earlier in the ninth chapter verse 8, the apostles said it was not the children of the flesh who were necessarily God's heirs. Instead, it was the children of the promise who were regarded as Abraham's descendants. The multi-ethnic shape of the covenant community was sovereignly chosen by God. Looking back to Genesis the 18th chapter verse 10 and verse 14, Paul cited the Lord's words to Abraham that within a year Sarah would have a son, Romans the ninth chapter, verse 9. In turn, Isaac would be the one through whom the line of promise would come. Even during Israel's past, there were skeptics and people who did not believe the promises of God. Paul raises God's sovereign choice between Isaac and Ishmael, the ninth chapter, verses 7 through 9, and Jacob and Esau, 
verses 10 through 13. Paul remembered the words of God to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. Exodus the 33rd chapter verse 19. The Septuagint In his Old Testament quotations, verses 3 and 9 through 12, the translation Paul used was the Septuagint. Jewish tradition says that the Septuagint was created by 72 Jewish scholars, six from each of the twelve tribes of Israel, in the second or third century BC in Egypt. They translated the Hebrew text into the common language of the Koine Greek, since few Jews spoke the Hebrew any longer. The Egyptian ruler at the time, Ptolemy II Philadelphus, supposedly brought 72 Jews from Jerusalem to Alexandria, put them all in separate rooms and told them to write the words of Moses in Greek. Miraculously, their translations were all identical. While that tradition is probably fictional, most historians agree that the first five books of the Old Testament were translated into Greek at about that time period in Egypt. Other books were translated later. The Septuagint was widely used in Jesus' day, but it is not typically used to translate modern Bibles for its differences from the Hebrew text. We will now close out this section with a window on the Word. Give me your eyes. Too often we become comfortable in our own bubbles and don't want to extend beyond that. This can happen in any stage of life. New believers feel more accepted with other new believers rather than more mature Christians, and more mature Christians sometimes struggle relating to new converts. Paul emphasizes in today's lesson that we are reliant upon one another as the body of Christ, and it's the duty of the stronger Christians to uplift the weaker ones. Consider the words of this song by Brandon Heath as you go about your week. Give me your eyes for just one second. Give me your eyes so I can see. Everything that I keep missing, give me your love for humanity. Section 3 is our Bible application. Explore specific ways we can demonstrate God's love and acceptance to one another. After you have read in the section, Uplift Defined from your student book, notice questions 10, 11, and 12. How can you improve the spiritual life of a fellow believer today, tomorrow, this week? How can you improve the social life of a fellow believer today, tomorrow, this week? And how can you improve the intellectual condition of a fellow believer today, tomorrow, this week? Paul says believers are to lift up one another. In particular, the stronger are supposed to look out for the ones of weaker faith. This wasn't meant as something to divide the church body into weak and strong, 
but rather compel the body to pull together to ensure there was no divide. Mature Christians have a responsibility to stand in the gap for newer believers who are still learning about the faith. Section 4 is our life response. Spend time praising the Lord for His abundant grace. We have spent a lot of time thinking of ways to encourage one another, and now it's time to praise God for what He is doing in our lives. May God receive all the glory for the unity that will be born from this uplifting work. There is nothing more pleasing to Him than His children living and working in harmony. The key verse of our day's lesson is from Romans, the 15th chapter, verses 5 through 6. Now the God of patience and consolation grant you to be like-minded one toward another according to Christ Jesus, that ye may with one mind and one mouth glorify God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. To God be the glory, for he has blessed us with another opportunity to share in the study of his holy word. We invite you to join us for next week's lesson from Hebrews, the sixth chapter, verses 9 through 20. Think about your definition of the word diligence and continue your family Bible study and individual devotions at home. To the men, we pray that you will have a blessed Father's Day. We will now close out our day's session with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for the unity of the body of Christ. And help us, Lord God, to uplift our brothers and sisters in Christ. We love you, Lord, and we thank you for the love that you have for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.